Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get lit, we get fly, we talk stuff, we get high. But to the masses, we just a podcast called Verified. I'm your host, I'm Joe Paul. We're here with a very, very special guest, probably a superhero to the Jewish people, because if you see some of the videos that are going on online right now, my dude is being pushed all over campus, but he is standing his ground and he is uh, he's really at the forefront of all of these, you know, campuses, you know, uh, campus encampments. That's a weird tongue twister, campus encampments. We're going to have to use that in, in a in a rhyme <laughs> somewhere somehow. But without further ado, Mr. Milagro Jones, how are you today, sir? Shabbat Shalom. Our university has a policy. You're not allowed to camp on our university. If me and my brother wanted to bring the homies and grab some cases of brews and camp out here, they're going to be like, bro, get out of here. You're not allowed to do that. Milagro Jones was trying to walk through the encampment at the UCLA campus when he was surrounded by protesters. They wasn't letting me move, period. They had me completely surrounded. They're saying some weird stuff. Saying, they were saying I was an Israeli agitator. I don't even know what that is, bro. At the end of the day, they're not supposed to be here. That's my number one point. My second point is I'm a student, so I can walk around wherever I want. Third of all, I stand for zero tolerance for anti-Semitism on a campus, period. As an African-American, and my dad was born before the Civil Rights Act, and my people had to fight just for basic civil rights, I don't agree with any type of discrimination. Yo, 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 uh, this is Milagro Jones, um, Daddy Milagro on YouTube, Cupid Soldier on TikTok, Cupid General on X, and Daddy Milagro on Instagram. So, yes, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. There we go. And in true Jewish fashion, let me say, shalom, motherfucker. <laughs> Shout out to the good people at, you know, shalom, motherfucker. They send me a, a nice little welcome kit, you know. So I get to walk around now and let people know exactly who I am. So let's jump right into it. So what's been going on with you? So what happened over at UCLA? First off, so I know that a couple of weeks ago, you were really, really about the free Palestine movement. You went to go show support and stand in solidarity with a bunch of the people who believe that they are standing for, you know, the Palestinian cause. And let me not diminish it because there is a plight and I do recognize it. But you kind of had like an awakening, so to speak. Why don't you tell, why, why don't you walk us through it real fast, you know, from the, you know, leaving your house that day to go to the campus to go stand and chant free, free Palestine. Take it away. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, this was a Friday. It was on April 26th. Um, I have my research class on Fridays, um, so I'm an undergraduate uh, researcher through the Mellon Mays uh, Undergraduate Fellowship, and I research drill music as a form of African-American uh, literature. So I put uh, artists like uh, Pac-Man from Drove City in Chicago up there with Shakespeare and Beowulf and uh, show how this is like real literature. And so uh, I was going to the campus to to meet with everybody, and uh, it's usually in Powell Library, but when I went to Powell Library. It was totally blocked off. Um, there was a bunch of protesters there. They had a they had a camp. And uh, so I went to Murphy Hall, which is where they ended up having a class in the basement. We had pizza. Students were there. Uh, there was a, a lady from uh, one of the museums. Um, she was there, like a, a lady who works for the museum. And uh, we just, we all hung out. We chopped it up. I told them about my grad school plans. And then when we all left, uh, one of the homies went into the encampment with his homies. So they was too deep. Uh, my homegirl went in. Nobody stopped. So nobody bothered her. But then when I went to go in, um, they 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 tried to check me and stop me at the entrance. Um, I ended up going in anyways. They started following me around. I'm I'm like, do you like my uh cologne? You like how I smell? Like why you breathing down my neck? They, uh, they were digging they started, the hair. They were digging right, the hair. Right, right, right. For real. They started throwing uh blankets in my face, scarves in my face. Um, blankets. They you you me, weren't tired. What the fuck? Not right, exactly. No, real talk, and uh, I, and I and I let them know that. Like I, I, I definitely let them know that, and uh, so it just was getting crazy. They were telling me I couldn't record uh or take video, um, even though that's my that's my First Amendment right. So all of a sudden, uh, faculty members started sh like open hand pushing me. Then they started sh uh body checking me, and then so, so let me just uh, get that, let me get this correct. So students and UCLA faculty members were physically putting their hands on you, whether it was causing you any you know, grave injury, it's still, they're invading your public space. It is, well, you're, they're invading your private space. You are in a public space and there is no expectational reason, reason of privacy to be, you know, um, from being recorded, especially, you know, the fact that you are on a college campus. Like it, right. it is, it's not like you're in somebody else's house in their living room. So you have every God given right to walk wherever the hell you want, you know, with the exception of walking into like the girl's bathroom, because that would be just wrong. So, right. so, so faculty members and students were putting their hands on you, weren't saying that you couldn't record in the public place, even though that's your first amendment. Right. And yep. then, and so then what, what did you do? What now, what kept you from just starting, just start laying people out? I mean, I know that you're a good person, obviously, but you know, 
yeah. I, I don't know if I could have contained myself. So what's the secret? Let let's let us know. Yeah. So I so at first, uh, that's where my mind was going, and uh, and uh, so I did. I definitely told the dude that if you know if you touch me again, that's exactly what's gonna happen. But uh, when I said it, um, I started thinking about like getting expelled. I started thinking about getting suspended um, from the school. I know uh, for me, it's it's very important to get my uh, to get my education. I'm a single parent. Um, I, I was born and raised in homelessness. You know, I, I I'm 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 in poverty. So this is this is my opportunity to kind of get that economic mobility to lift myself up. You know, and then to be able to go back to the hood and help the hood out to uplift my family. So I, I couldn't, yeah, I, I could I couldn't throw away my opportunity over these clowns. So I just uh, had to like I had to think um smarter, not harder. So they they, like they exactly. So they linked up arms and they started going one, two, three, push, one, two, three, push, and, and trying to push me out the uh out the area as a as a squad, like 20, 20 deep. So I just realized like, you know, if you're playing tug of war, one person can't, you know, beat 20 people unless, you know, he's Samson against the Philistines or something. Mm -hmm. So what I what I did is I, I sat I sat down uh cross legged and I just told him, I said, uh, you're not gonna be up and carry me and throw me out of here. And I knew they wouldn't because there was uh aerial the helicopter like a, a media helicopter with aerial views there was all type of cameras aimed towards us so they completely surrounded me in a circle when i sat down cross-legged then they held up blankets over the entire area to try to make sure the media couldn't get any uh, photos or video of what was going on and then they held me there for over an hour intermittently like i'll say two or three times they came to me and said we'll open up a space for you to uh leave out that out and exit and i was like and they wanted me to leave the whole entire uh camp and i was telling them like i'm not leaving the camp i'm you're gonna let me free and i'm gonna take my photos and videos and do what I'm doing this my rights uh, the plaza you own this space uh the president Dre and the chester block and i give you permission to take over this space uh you don't have any rights to to restrict my movement I called now, UCPD. Did they, did they take your, they UCPD, take your phone, hey, or, you were, or you were able to record all of this? Oh yeah, I was. I was able to record them, and and uh, and I uploaded a, a video. And and on top of it, CNN, Fox News, and uh, KTLA got some good footage. Aerial shots. Um, they got they, they still will get some good footage. Uh, of them of them chasing me around when I was in there because I was at first I was trying to get away from them. They just chased me around. So and then they started pushing me, surrounding me. And got me into that uh, enclosure where they was had me surrounded. And uh, so I called UCP. Real, real fast, check your yep. check your Wi-Fi real fast because uh, we're having that same problem that we did last time. Uh, I okay. guess they didn't up. I guess they didn't upgrade the uh, the internet connection uh, over there in UCLA just yet, huh? Oh, 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 oh So I'm I'm a uh, yeah. I'm I'm not on the campus right now. I'm a uh, I'm going to the studio right now. The recording studio oh, okay. in Malibu. Yeah, yeah. So maybe uh, you think it's good if I just turn my Wi-Fi off and see if it just the data will work better like that. Yeah, yeah, give it a shot. Because if anything, I can always edit out of this. Uh -huh. But I mean, this is but this is like real life shit right here. So it's like this is the stuff that happens. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes, uh, uh -huh. sometimes shit happens. Cool, cool. Let me uh, see. Is it, is it is it improving at all? Uh, well, I mean, b before it was cool. Now, um, I mean, I, I guess we'll go along and we'll see if it works. If anything, you'll put the Wi-Fi back on, you know, and then we'll just jump back into it. Maybe I'll just you know edit okay. all of this out anyway. So, actually, yeah, put your Wi-Fi back on because okay. you're like frozen more than you were the last time. So, uh, but I must commend you though for, you know, using uh, a lot of self-control because, you know, I was reading a lot about your story and I know about, you know, the stuff that you've been through, especially, you know, when, you know, you were in prison and then you had to get your GED in prison and, you know, you had to transfer from one school to another school to another school in order to get, actually get to UCLA. So I could see all of that like flashing before your eyes while this crowd surrounds you and you're thinking, okay, do I want to go back to prison by an assault charge or do I want to stand my ground and try this nonviolent approach and hopefully they don't maul me? So I, I applaud you for, you know, for using that restraint because, right, right. because we kind of need you here on the fight because as you see, it's not so peaceful on campus with the, uh, the pro-Palestinians. So what was your uh, like biggest, like, I guess, you know, like awakening that was like, oh shit, like this ain't for me. This is not anything of what I thought. So, so we're back. We're back. We had some a uh, little bit of technical difficulties, but you know the great thing about technology is that we could always do a couple of workarounds. So, so basically, the question was, why do you think that they didn't let you in the campus? I know that they said something to you that they thought that you were a Zionist or a Zionist agitator, and so again, so I want you to pick up uh, and you know, well, I'm going to ask you along the way, like you know, what you were thinking in your head as far as like what the. F what the hell is happening right now? Why is why does right. this feel like the twilight zone to me? So go ahead. Right. So basically, um, they did. Yeah, they they said I was uh Israeli is what they said. They said I was an Israeli agitator is the word they used. 
Um, that was on the first incident, the first day on Friday, April 26th. And uh, so when they told me that that was their excuse for the treatment that I received, um, that that clicked into my mind and reason uh, to like kind of explain why I think it would click into my mind the way it did is because um, in fall 2022, I had a class with a professor named Blake Almondinger, and he stood in front of the classroom and he said uh, he, he a Jewish student turned in a, a, a paper about their identity. And he said, uh, if the if if the Jewish religion is so life affirming, why do you guys always complain? And he said he went into a caricature of a Jewish person and he said, Oy vey, I wandered in the desert for 40 years. I survived the Holocaust. All I do is complain. And he said it in a joking manner and laughed in front of the class. And so me and a Muslim student filed a DPO complaint, which is a discrimination uh, prevention office complaint. Now, this Thank complaint you. was fall 2022. This now on Friday, April 26th, this complaint had not been completed. It was completed on uh uh May 2nd, 2024. It only they I, in my opinion, they only completed it because the pressure was put on it by this incident unfolding. So I think that by me having witnessed that level of anti-Semitism speaking up against it back then and being uh met with a barrage of hate from students, from uh it being covered up by the uh internal departments of UCLA. I think that may have played a role now that I've had a couple of days to think about this or why it would just click in my mind. Like when they said uh, they did it because I'm Israeli, it clicked in my mind like that was anti-Semitic. And I think that was probably the reason why. And uh, so once once I realized what they was doing was uh, was deeply anti-Semitic um, on that first incident, it, it, it only it only grew more obvious. The next time I went to the encampment, uh, they were having check check in zones that were way more sophisticated than the first time. The first time it was just a guy with a clipboard and you could kind of just push right past them. Now they had a whole team of people in vests. Uh, Jewish students were not allowed in unless they said, I denounce uh, Zionism. So uh, on that second time, I was called a Zionist for the first time. Once they started calling me that and calling me that and calling me that, I, I made sure I went and got the t-shirt that says Zionist on it, and, and I and I went and I went My rocking man. the T-shirt. Yeah, I went I went rocking the T-shirt that says Zionist. And what do uh, you, you think? Know, what, what do you say to people that say, "Oh, I'm not anti-Jew. I'm just anti-Zionist." You know. Now, and for context, obviously, you're not Jewish. I mean, even though like we accept you as a Jewish brother. So you know, if you ever want to come over, you just let me. I'll put in a good word for you. But Hashem, gotta take care of my brother. But. <laughs> What do you say to people that say, "Oh, I'm not anti-Jew. I'm just anti-Zionist." What do you What do you think that means in in their minds? Right. So I've heard that from a lot of different people. So I have, uh, like, for example, the faculty member who's Jewish, and she she says that if it's someone that's Jewish that says that to me, um, I would say like they're trying to assimilate, and and I would totally understand. Like I know there's people who are black, African American, and they can pass for white, and sometimes they pass for white. I get it. But if someone is not Jewish and they say that then I will try to educate them and explain to them that my understanding of, of being a Zionist is that uh, it means that I support the existence of a Jewish homeland in Israel. And the same way that I support uh, the existence of the American nation here in North America. Now we we can, we can uh, have criticisms of America. It's not the perfect place on earth, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to let someone else uh, it, convince me that America shouldn't exist. So there's no way that I'm going to let anyone anywhere convince me that Israel shouldn't exist. I believe that, you know, the people in Israel have have a right to self-determination. And I think the same way that uh, that the nation of Israel is an ally to us right now in Israel's time of need, we need to be an ally to Israel. And it's not just Israel. It's the Jewish diaspora. So Jewish people all over the world are are experiencing anti-Semitism and all of us to have a voice. We need to speak up. All of us to have. Uh, platform we need to speak up and all of us that are able-bodied young men we need to actually in these physical spaces stand up and get involved and intervene we can't just uh stand by and let jewish women be assaulted we can't just stand by and let jewish elders be assaulted we can't just stand by and let other uh able-bodied men that are jewish get jumped on by multiple assailants we have to come to their aid and we have to stand up for them the same way Amen. that the jewish community stood with the african-american community during the civil rights movement now you're in the studio right yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm with yeah, David yeah. Levy uh, in, Ma in Malibu, Studio Malibu. I want you to go grab a microphone and I want you to just slam it right now. Because if that <laughs> wasn't a mic drop moment right there, I'll pay for the microphone. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but if that that was a mic slam moment, if I ever heard one, that was um, that was beautifully put. Like I like I almost felt myself almost like tearing up. Like yes, you get it. 
somebody actually understands what we're going through and you and thank you because you're sacrificing a lot because i don't know if you know jewish people we're not we're not the most popular bunch nowadays so right. the fact that you the fact that you could stand up you know in the face of adversity amongst all of this shit i mean i'm sure you've lost like a ton of friends you know right. because of exactly. because of this yeah. you know yeah. because they don't know any better and i applaud you for at least you know doing that extra step in learning the actual meaning of a lot of these things that, that you had spoken on me and you have spoke, you know, offline as well. So, um, so right. this, you know, things that people aren't privy to that me and you have spoke on, but the fact that you are able to overcome, you know, the, uh, I guess the quote unquote, you know, uh, cheering for the underdog, you know, and make yeah. it that like, just cause this is the right thing to do, even though we have severely outnumbered, I yeah. applaud you for taking that stance. And I, and I wish that more people would follow, you know, in that exact same way that you conducted yourself. Now, uh, moving forward, is there any like uh, legal, you know, um, suits that are happening because of, you know, what happened now? And if you can't speak on it, I completely understand because we don't want to jeopardize anything. But, you know, yeah. is are, are there legal matters that, you know, are going to be moving forward with regards to how they restricted you on campus and kind of violated your First Amendment right? And I mean, for lack of better words, kind of like, you know, assaulted you because they kind of put surrounded you, put you down on the floor. I mean, yeah, you sat down, you know, voluntarily, but it was either that or you risk getting like, you know, crushed by a mob of 30. Right. So uh, there's definitely uh, legal proceedings um, beginning right now. Um, I, I have uh, a lawyer representing me um, and I've already signed my uh, retainer with my lawyer. Um, so we are moving forward with our uh, lawsuit. Um, we're starting out uh, with uh, just the claim. Today, we're filing the claim. So after I leave the studio, I'm going to get that uh, printed off, filled out, scan it over and send it to him. Um, he just told me today that he's he's a very tenacious lawyer and he's going to pursue this with all of his uh, passion and energy. Jewish so, lawyer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, only, I'm only kidding. <laughs> see, uh, he, he is. See, not, even he, me, I got to stop joking like that. But, he is. But, he, he is. But, and, and he's a double Bruin. He's very passionate about this. He's very, he's very, but, he's, he's, he, he went to he went to UCLA for his undergrad and he went to UCLA for law school. So he's very passionate about protecting this university and and and, and protecting awesome. us, a student like me. So awesome. What do you say to people that say it's my it's freedom of speech for me to speak this way when they say, you know, you know, there is only one solution, you know, intifada revolution. I bet people don't even know what actual intifada actually is. I mean, yep. the term in Arabic means to shake off, but it's a violent shake off. And yep. So what do you say to people that say, oh, it's my it's my free speech that I can say Intifada revolution from the river to the sea, you know, all Jews, you know, should, will never be and and all the stuff that they say. I mean, yeah, I know so you're not a First, a First Amendment scholar or anything like that, but, yeah. you know, but this is a good conversation point, you know, for the sake of the podcast. I appreciate yeah, that. yeah. So so I know like uh, this, this what took place was on a university campus. And I know that our university, UCLA, has policies in place. Um, and they have expressed to us as students uh, numerous times that we do have uh, free speech and that the professors also have free speech. But within that free speech, um, there's also a DPO, Discrimination Prevention Office, a Civil Rights Office on campus. And they've expressed to students uh, and faculty that we are not allowed to use hate speech. So I would I would uh, define those type of statements as forms of hate speech. And that's why when I recorded uh, a lot of the stuff that was said and even some of the graffiti, if you look at the news um, media that's been uh, published on uh, Fox News, CNN, KTLA, across different media, there's a lot that they won't publish. If it, if it, if it wasn't hate speech, they would have published it. If, if some of that graffiti uh, wasn't uh, anti-Semitic slurs, they wouldn't have to blur it out. So we as Americans and the people all over the world, we know that that's hate speech and we know that these are anti-Semitic slurs, but there are those who are disingenuous and want to use uh, the excuse that this is just me expressing my free speech to push out hate speech. And I don't think that would be right for any group. It doesn't matter if it's uh, Jewish people, African-Americans, uh, LGBTQ community, any group that's marginalized, any group that experiences discrimination, they should never be subject to uh, hate speech on a, on a campus, especially this is a public university, not a private university. So they're also getting federal funding, they're getting funding uh, through the state of California. So it's inexcusable. And I, and I do believe that uh, people need to be held accountable if they can be identified as making those chants. And I think that goes for faculty, students, anyone on the campus who was who was using that type of hate speech should face some type of disciplinary action.
I, I agree. I agree. I mean, I don't know what extent because, I mean, obviously it's on a college campus, so there might be, you know, some laws within the actual, you know, college where it's like, you know, like a reprimanding, you know, and then maybe a suspension and then, you know, legal action. But, you know, if you're breaking the law and you call, like I saw today that there was like chance for, you know, just death to all, from water to water, death to all the Jews, from water to water, you know, Israel should never be, never be anymore. So yep. uh, it, 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 I think it crosses a fine line between like, you know, free speech and, you know, hate speech. And in a world that is dominated by hate, I think there's just a little too much of it out there. And the, the complicitness of a lot of public officials to not call it for what it is, is astounding. Like, I mean, I, yeah. I know that they, that they want to empower the youth to, you know, to feel good about what they're doing. And obviously, you know, protesting is, you know, what America was founded on, but we got to draw a line somewhere. Like, they, like right. it can't just be like a, a full blanket, you know, the, uh, you know, jurisdiction that just covers everything with you know with impunity like you can't like i'm hearing now that they're not going to get prosecuted you know but, right i mean i'm no um i'm not a lawyer or anything like that i mean i have read a, a shitload of you know legal books and mo mostly international humanitarian law but yeah. uh so the next thing is I, I hear a lot of them saying you know you're co uh, like you're complicit in genocide you know you support a genocide you know they're the genocidal actions of israel you know on the palestinian people and I want to know, maybe, what the hell are they talking about? Because, yeah, I mean, so I've, cause I've done the research. And so with genocide, the, the biggest thing with genocide, especially in the within, you know, the forget about the court of public opinion, like international mm -hmm. humanitarian law, you know, or, you know, the court in South Africa, you know, for criminal justice. To prove genocide, you have to establish the intent of genocide. There's, I, I, I forgot the word. I think it's called like do, uh, dolus specialis. Um, which is a special kind of mens rea that is needed to actually prove genocide. Like there was one, there was one person on the Israeli side. I, I can't can't remember his name now. He's not Netanyahu. Um, he he is in the government, you know, far right side, you know, and said something of, you know, we gotta, you know, take out, you know, every last one of them, uh, or you know, starve them, or however we're yeah. gonna do it, and and that could be considered. But the actions that the IDF takes is anything but. So, what do you think? they think they mean when they're saying a genocide to the Palestinian people. Yeah. So my understanding is that uh, the reason why the students uh, use that is because it's being fed to them by FJP and SJP who are under the BDS movement, who when I've looked at some of the funding and some of the things that are going on, uh, I, I could only define these uh, groups as sympathetic to terrorism or as uh, groups that are functioning as terrorist organizations. So, uh, and, and I'll say allegedly they're functioning as terrorist organizations until I can prove it beyond uh, beyond reasonable doubt, which I, I hope to do in the next uh, weeks and months. And uh, so my understanding is the reason why they use that term is they, they, want, to, they want a scapegoat. They want to, uh, to, to find a scapegoat that they can use to, uh, to, blame, to blame something on. And uh, at the end of the day, they're using anti-Semitism as their convenient scapegoat to point a finger and really push their movement. What they want, in my opinion, and what my understanding is they want to overthrow uh, this constitution we have and bring in something new, a new form of governance, uh, a new a new nation state that they would have power over. Yeah, they, want, they want Sharia law. And I, exactly. and I do not. I, I kind of I like democracy. Uh, I like I mean, I, I I love this country and I love what it stands for and the principles that it stands for. I don't really agree too much with how we got here, but we are here nonetheless. Right. So, and I always say to regret a decision made in the past is to not fully appreciate who you are today. So as long as you can acknowledge the mistakes along the way that you made, you can fully appreciate the person that you've become today or a nation that you've become today. Yep. That's why I can't understand a lot of these kids are making you know, I call it like the the tattoo face syndrome. It's like you're yep. basically putting a mark on yourself that's going to prevent you from really advancing and getting the fruitfulness out of life. And then you'll have more reason to blame the country that you basically you. It's like you're cutting off your nose to spite to spite your face. And right, you know, right. I wish most. I wish some of these parents would get involved and say, "You got to come home. You can't be sitting there with a kafia, you know, chanting." death to the jews i didn't raise you like that right you know like, and and there are organizations that are you know that are hell-bent on exposing every last one of them putting them up on a database and letting yep. the entire world know when you search that name 
You want to get a job? This is what's going to pop up. You know, similar right. like, you know, if you got caught up in the January 6th of storming the Capitol, you know, it's pretty much a, a mark on your permanent record for the rest of your life. So, you know, right. so but, I, but, but I'm glad you were able to get through that without, you know, without injury, without, you know, suffering any sort of, I'm sure you are getting death threats left and right, like we all are, you know, yeah. lately. So I'm glad yeah. that you got out of there in one piece. And I'm really excited to see this next journey, you know, which is your music that you're going to yeah. be doing, you know, for so, sure. um, and like I said, you know, on the phone, anything that I could do to help you, you know, um, you know, I would love to, but uh, real fast, do me a favor, just kick us, uh, just kick us a, a quick 16, just so people can know that you got them bars and that you're ready to go. All right, for sure. Check it out. Uh -huh. I know when you be at, you be cop blocking at parties. Whoa, my cock never got blocked. Got your girl chopped doing that Cardi. Yo, I'm puffing that weed, no stands, no seeds. I let the Bacardi flow. Bacardi Poen, you know when that's when that party grow. They just start showing up and they throwing up all that lunch and liquor. Chickens, they held a wall, a little elk harder. They think they strippers. And by the way, they flirt and they wear their skirts. I think they flippers. Flipping like acrobats and they act the ass and they pass that swisher. I swish your sweet up, your sister resistance stripping me. Tongue tied when her tongue tried to tickle me. I ain't no liquor. Rich, but she's lick illicit and licking me. And there's these pennies and nickels. She's showing her nipples and nibbling me. Wiggly, jiggly, giggly. See, see, now my dick was bigger than me. Now, Fred, they let she be wriggling free. I told her, chick, be gone. Dick too long. You can't handle this. You could have brought my dick if my shit had some handle grips. You dig? Hell yeah. Hell 16, yeah. 16, Hell you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yo, anyone in that studio who got access to a label, sign up, man, quick before I put him with my peoples. And all of a sudden, he's gone out the West Coast. <laughs> I bring him over here. No, nah, that was nice. That, that was ill. I like that. You uh, you could tell that you have a, a lot of influence from uh, a lot of artists that, you know, I grew up listening to. You could hear a lot of Nipsey. You could hear, uh, you know, a lot of Snoop. You could hear E-40. Um, so, yeah, I, I dig it, man. I like it. I like it a lot. And, you know, being Appreciate in music for like the past 25 years, I'm not just going to blow smoke up your ass and be like this. Like, yeah, yeah, that was good. That was good. If you was whack, I would have been like, yo, man, stick to activism. You know, whatever you get in your college degree. You know what I'm saying? Much respect. You know what I'm saying, yo, leave, leave these lyrics and you know, and bars to the professionals. But now nah, you uh you did your thing and I salute you. I appreciate it. I'll stamp that. I stamp that right now. Boom. Hopefully that didn't fuck up my recording. That's so that we verified. Happened. Yes, right. We are verified. So <laughs> uh but, but but tell everyone where, where they can find you. You know what I'm saying? I want you to, you know, get back to what you gotta do. And I know uh, yeah. you got some recording to do, and I know you got some legal matters to take care of. And if you need a character witness, yo, know, listen, I'll say that I was there. Just oh, every oh. listen, it looks like me, bald Appreciate head. You know what I'm saying? White. I mean, you know, this is this is the face of white supremacy, right? Like, <laughs> uh, you know, before we let, let's get to that. Uh, I know me and you had a conversation about, you know, the um the realization that like all Jews aren't white. You know, so right. I so I, lo I love that story. So I, I do want you to you know say it real fast before we uh, before we say goodbye. Yeah, yeah. So basically, uh, yeah. When I when I went into the uh encampment, they 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 said they mistake me for Israeli. And a lot of people since then have have made little comments like, oh, why would they think you're Jewish? As if when they're saying that, they would say only white people are Jewish. But they're actually, you know, there's Ethiopian Jews. There's Jews that, you know, just like Americans, there's there's Jewish people that, that you know, run the gamut. Just like African-Americans. We, we got uh, people that look different that are in the African-American community. So I feel like there's a lot of uh, stereotypes, a lot of tropes, a lot of misinformation circling around the internet, especially on the campuses with these protest movements. And I think for uh, individuals uh, like myself, we got to get the truth out there and we got to get the message out uh, that we need to all just stand together and, and unite. So that's that's really my message. And that's really what I'm trying to share. I love it, man. I love it. Tell the people where they can find you, because I want them to be able to I want I want your platform to grow like at an exponential rate. The stuff that sure. you're doing, because I see you out there on your investigative journalism shit, you know, putting the the camera in people's faces, be like, you know, uh, why, why is it that they didn't, you know, why didn't they protect the Jewish people? No comment, no comment. Oh, that's what you, yeah, thanks. Good, right, good right. job, Apex. Great job. Great job of protecting the community and really, really being transparent. And I saw you asked like, like eight of them. One guy right. even was like, oh, it's above my pay grade. Uh, yeah. You know, so that means that it sounds like there was actual an actual initiative if he was yeah, to say off, 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 off camera they'll tell me. yeah off camera they've told me that uh they had a directive from uh from the university to only protect property and not protect people but i'm trying to get them to admit it on camera and pretty soon i think one of them is gonna uh, admit it on camera because there's different security who are cooler than other ones there's some who don't take the job that seriously you know so i'm pretty sure uh they're gonna slip up and say it on camera soon but yeah you can find me at uh daddy milagro on youtube and instagram cupid soldier on uh on tiktok and cupid general on x 
And uh, you know, you can watch me on this uh verified podcast, you know what I'm saying, with Joe Paul. You dig? That's what's up. That's what's up. Yo, I really appreciate you taking your time. I know we had man technical difficulties the other day. So I really appreciate you taking your time doing this. And I know that you're all over the place on CNN, on Fox News. I know you're gonna get signed in a couple minutes. You're gonna forget about us little guys. Just make sure you remember the Jews. That's all because we're we're always gonna oh, this is one thing that I was thinking before I, I let you go. You realize that you really are a part of history now. The fact what you went through. I feel will be documented in the pages to come because it's a it's a monumental tipping point where one person realized and sparked a movement to let the other people know, hey, this is some bullshit. And if they can do that to me, then they can do that to you. So how is that really peaceful? How is that for unity? How is this a peaceful protest in any manner while you're calling for the annihilation of an entire species that is already an endangered species to begin with. Like, there's only 15 million Jews in the world today. We make up 0.2% of the world's population, and apparently we, we're we attributed to 100% of the problems. So, I mean, I thought I was cool. I, didn't, I mean, I, I, I didn't do anything to you, right? I didn't do anything to you, right? I mean, shit, I don't know. But I'd like to leave you with a quote that I like to live my life by. I'd like you to attribute to your life as well as everyone that you that is affected by you. We are all just here for a small cup of coffee. I'm just trying to drink it while it's still hot. This is your boy, I am Joe Paul. We were rocking out the Verified Podcast with my boy, Daddy Milagro. Make sure that you check him out. Make sure you follow him, stream him, do all his stuff. He's going to be a big star moving forward. And from all the Jewish people to you, we salute you. Thank you, my brother. One love. Have a great weekend. Shabbat shalom. What's up? Peace, one love.